Oh, you made us wait for this one, P. You made us wait for this one. Oh, man. Thank you so much, bro. How are you? I'm doing great. So good to see you. I love you, man. I love seeing you talking to you about your music, man. It's like... Right. We, we're still here. We're still alive. And you and, and, and Miley coming together on Doctor and work it out. Um, it's just started the, at the beginning. This is, a ma- this is a match made in heaven. So when was the match made? 2012, maybe? Your know, time is relative, and I love that. We, we, we put way too much emphasis on time. And it's about the right time. So why was it not, before we get to the right time, which is today, why, what was holding it back from being finished or being completed in the moment back then? You know, just because the iPad came out when it came out doesn't mean that it was Steve Jobs and his team's idea only a year before. We don't know if he was having those types of conversations in the 70s or having those kinds of like pontifications in the 80s. Like, you just never know. And there's a moment where you feel like you feel the stickiness in something, but you may feel that the environment is not ready for it. It takes real discipline to do that. You know, it takes real creative discipline to do that, which I think is something that a lot of people don't exercise out of fear. They're like, I've got it. It's hot. Let me get it out right now. To hold on to it is tough. Listen, with love and respect and humility, I will say that, like, this is not the first time that this has happened. You know, probably... 60% of like my discography are songs that were presented to other people, which is a different scenario. And, um, you know, it didn't necessarily work for that person, but maybe three or four years later, um, you know, those songs ended up on other artists, sometimes of a different genre, sometimes, you know, of the same genre. And in this particular instance, this was somebody that like got it at the time, but we all just knew like it just wasn't time for it. You know, but this was absolutely 12 years ago. You know what I love about about what you're describing is it encourages kindness to the creative process. And I think it, it encourages the idea of music and, and the space it exists in being perpetual and not necessarily controllable, that it, that, that it will find its, it will find itself back, back into focus, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. Well, but I'm honored and it feels great. And um, she looks amazing and she feels amazing. And it's just, I mean, we, we, did some brushing up like a couple of tweaks here and there but it's this is this is what it is you've worked with some of the greatest performers vocalists creative people on the planet and and will continue to do so but just focusing on miley for a second who's not not with us right now um what was what was memorable and special what will you always carry with you through your life from the experience of of working with and recording Miley? well i'll never forget just like meeting her you know at a time where like you know, people had pegged her to be like one thing particularly, you know, uh, you know, she was Hannah Montana, at, Hannah Montana at the time. And she was like, you know, growing up and really wanted to like experience like life, no matter how far the precipice was like that was her. And, uh, you know, I just remember like, you know, the world not well, not the world, but maybe like the gatekeepers and just not understanding it and thinking that she could only be one thing, uh, which was young and, um, you know, this coming of age, like young girl, uh, finding out about life, but like with a cap. To yeah. It. Yeah. 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 I just remember like, you know, her just being in a place where no one really understood what she was. And I just, I got it. Like I understood. I'm like, Oh y'all, y'all don't understand. Like she, She's doing exactly what y'all thought she, what you perceived her to do and be, but she's now doing it at the juncture of where she is spiritually. And I thought that that was just as interesting and I was incredibly entertained by it. And then here she is, who knew that like she could sing Party in the USA? Who knew she could sing that? And then at the same time, sound like Stevie Nicks. <laughs> no, no, no. And when I figured that out, I was like, oh, this is about to be so fun. And it has been the entire time. And it's just been so great to just watch her. Like, you know, we did songs that went on her Bangers album. But then, like, this one was like, this was always fine wine to me. This was Petrush. I think about the song, though, P, and what it would have done for her back then. And, and Bangers did great things. But, but to your point, people weren't ready to hear you and Miley at this level, it sounds very now. And I think yeah. about what it would have meant to her to put that out and how it would have, it would have just sped it up in, in a lot of ways. It would have. And so I, I wonder kind of like from your perception, I know you're comfortable holding on. You've done it throughout your career. This will find its place in time. 
Yeah. But did she get that straight away? Was there a part of her that you could see was yearning to just try and put it out there and just break it wide open? You know, Miley is like um, strangely and oddly, but um, but it all makes sense at the end of the day. She is somebody who really understands the ether at times. And if you ever thought she made a misstep or if you ever had any kind of judgment on her, that's because she was just so living in the moment. Yeah. But really, at the end of the day, man, I've not met too many people who are just really so good with just understanding where like things are and how people feel in the moment. Like she just really has this intrinsic gift of reading modernity. Ooh, what a lovely statement. We both understand that like people really don't get how dialed in she is. You know, we talk about it all the time. It's just so crazy. And I think this is one of those moments where, like, they, they will really get to see it. But, you know, the crazy thing is, like, she's not on with us right now, but it will be cool. Should we do it? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I missed the sound of that. Oh, I missed, I missed the sound of that. Oh, Miley, what's going on? It's Zane. What's happening? It's been a while, Zane. How are you doing? It's great to hear your voice, my friend. How are you? And yours, I'm great. I'm having my morning matcha out of a mug that says Dolly for president. So <laughs> life is amazing. Wait, is that Pusha T behind Pharrell as well? Oh my God, this is the greatest dinner party ever. What's going, what's going on? <laughs> what is even happening? This is the most meta-modern experience I've had in a long time. Miley Cyrus is with us. Pharrell Williams is here. Thank you for making this happen, P. Miley, uh, Miley I'm so glad we get a chance to talk to you about this amazing song and what a re ins insane, unique journey it's been over the last sort of 12 years for the song to finally be ready to be heard. You know, I think this is just so aligned with me and Pharrell. We just believe so much in, in timing and in everything happening when it's supposed to. And around the Grammys, uh, Pharrell and I were talking about putting this song out and it just felt like it was so serendipitous and um, there were so many alignments and so many moments that made me know that now was the perfect time. And then sometimes things in our past make more sense in our present than they ever did then. And so this song, I think the, the nature, the celebration, the feeling, especially with the video, the joy, um, the dancing, the letting go, like it's what this song really always needed. And I don't think I could have delivered that at that time. And I know I couldn't have because I didn't or I would have. And so um, this has just worked out. It, it completely embodies my spirit and my essence at this exact moment. And this song is really just kind of fun. And, you know, it's um, not too heavy or heady or deep. And that's kind of right where I am in my, you know, my nature at this moment. And so it just feels really reflective of where I'm at. And that's really what my music always does. It's a perfect swerve. And I love that. I mean, I think if you can have the kind of success you had being able to let go of something tough like flowers and then go and be redeemed in such a beautiful way publicly by your fans and then ultimately by others to say, yeah, that song is a, is a copyright. It's a, it's a, it, it belongs to us as people now, not just you. You've been able to let that go. What a way to swerve onto the dance floor. Well, it's a celebration. My whole life is a celebration right now. I mean, kind of always I'm just able to, I'm able to see it as like I've gotten older. Um, you know, I was just saying the other day, it's not that things that, you know, haven't come up that have been, you know, different levels of stress or mm. passion. But I, at this point, I just can't remember the last time I had a bad day because I'm <laughs> surrounded by so much goodness. I mean, I really can't imagine having a bad day at this moment and there's just so much to be grateful and thankful for and again that's what me and Pharrell share most more than just our long history of friendship but it's just the gratitude for what we've you know created and what we've been gifted by others that have you know kind of graced us with their talents and none of us get this done alone and so having Pharrell you know be such a long-term friend for mm. me and really a family mm. member and you know we call each other sis and brother because it really feels that way mm. um and actually funny enough I told P this the other day I'm sitting in the same kitchen right now because I you know as much as I change I, I like some things to stay the same yep. and I'm sitting in the same kitchen looking at the kitchen table that I met Pharrell at and this was probably when I was maybe 17 or wow. 18 
wow. Pharrell came to my house for a meeting and to ask me what I was up to now that I was off of my TV show and what his vision was for me. And it was at this kitchen table that I'm sitting at right now. You know, Miley, we got P on the line right now. He's he's the one who's been able to reconnect us because obviously we're so excited just to be able to hear your voice right now on Apple. And we appreciate taking some time to, to, to talk about this record. And, and P, you know, do you remember that meeting or what were your impressions from that meeting? Because she's in that kitchen right now. It's like, again, time is relative. She sang me a song that she wrote that what I thought was like so abstract and so left of center for who, you know, the character that she played as Hannah Montana. And um, I just remember going, oh, okay, I got it. And mm -hmm. then like, you know, she had like a couple of little things happen or whatever, like coming out of Hannah Montana and, you know, she's young, she's like living life and she's doing things and, you know, just sort of testing who she is and testing what she's into and just sort of seeing. And I remember how she handled it. And I remember her just like, yeah, cool. But like, this is what I'm on right now. And this is what's so important to me. And like, by the way, let me just sing you this song. And she like sang and played guitar. So you got and to meet the person. You saw the human, the real person that, 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 that was that was searching for that creative release. You saw the person. Oh yeah, I met Miley Cyrus. Like I like I understood Hannah Montana, but I met Miley Cyrus that day. And I was like, oh. I was like, this is what I thought it was. Cause everyone was like, when I said I was going to go sit where they were like, wait, what? Like party in the US said, like, what are you gonna do with that? And I'm like, nah, I'm telling you, I think that this is, I think she's actually somebody else. <laughs> and by the way, party in the USA is her. But I'm saying, I think that there's a whole other side of her that she's wanting to express. Because I was mm. just looking at all this, like the people in the Us Magazine vibes. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, there is another person. There's another side to this person. And I bet on the other side of that is like some really fun songs. From that moment you met in the kitchen, I feel like that unlocked the fun songs era what were you what were you gonna say my friend here's like the awesome part so then yeah. pharrell's like i work out of miami that's where i live that's where i work like you should just come there and like pharrell said i was just kind of like discovering myself and what a great place to leave my mom behind in california and go to miami but it didn't work like that my mama tish followed me to miami with <laughs> right. my dog and my sister right. but we got a little place yeah we got a little she was like you're not going anywhere but we got you're not going to Miami with Pharrell Williams right now. Absolutely. Straight out of Hannah Montana, uh, straight to Miami. Yeah, that ain't happening. Yeah, that ain't not happening. happening. So my mom took me to Miami. But sometimes me and Pharrell, we would just be at the studio. And, you know, maybe the creativity, we didn't know exactly what we were going to say in the song. And so he'd be like, we got to go shopping. That's how it's going to come to us. And I remember him and I would leave the studio and go vintage shopping and everything would like fall out of the sky right then and tell us exactly what we were going to write. Amazing. And I have, that's what stayed with me the most, I guess, after, from learning from him was we went and bought, I didn't buy one. I bought two Chanel bags when we went shopping and I still have them and I still take them to the studio with me all the time. And when I look at them, I always remember that sometimes a bass line or a guitar or a drum, you know, pattern could actually just sound like a bag. Yeah. And that sounds kind of wild, but it's true. And sometimes having that visual or putting a ring up on the table and going, I want the synth to shine like this. I want the guitar to lay like this fabric. And he taught me so much about fashion, art, and design all that. becoming one like sense of expression, which then right after that, after I bought the giant two Chanel's, I was like, Pharrell, I really want to like change. Like I really want to have a big change. And I think I want to cut my hair. I want it to be short and I want to dye it bleach blonde. And he was kind of the only one I knew that everyone around me would tell me no. Mm. And he was really the only one that I asked, what did he think? And he was like, go for it. Like today, like tomorrow, like as soon as you can, that sounds like exactly the perfect thing to do. And so I did. And he was really the only one that I could kind of tell him what I really wanted, what I really wanted to make, who I really wanted to be, what I really wanted to do. And he was always there. You know, I think uh, Pharrell was perfect because it was almost like he could be a bumper for me, but he wasn't going to be a bridle. He wasn't going to hold me back, but he was going to give me the lane that I could stay in kind of safely and not take anything too far. But again, give me that 
having those boundaries and having those people that keep you in line, they actually give you a sense of freedom and safety because you know that you're good. Um, but again, he never, it was never choking me out, having me do what he wanted me to do. And sometimes creatively at that time, I did feel like I had a bridle on. And so I just felt so free when I was in the studio with him. That's a beautiful story. And what an amazing uh, reminder that even the people who experience the most by working with the greatest are still really only about the learning. Because what I took from that story, apart from you know a wonderful friendship and a great support foundation for you to continue to be entirely yourself, we all need those mentors in our life, those friends in our life. That P, you are on the you are, you were just you were just like pushing your curiosity like you do every day. Like you were you were looking for inspiration outside of the studio as well. Yeah, I mean, listen, I am um, I'm only as good as my collaborators, um, and I know that like. You know, when I was younger, I used to like beat my chest and like pat my back and say, oh, you know, I'm this and I'm that. But I mean, you were dominating like 20 percent of American radio at the time, to be fair. So it was like it was a not, not a bad jacket to wear, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> here, first of all, thank you. That's super kind. Um, it was actually 43. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm a drop one. I knew it. <laughs> so you got me. You, you trapped me in that one. Um, but here's what I'll say. Um, even still, I mean, I was the benefactor of like the universe, like writing something and, and saying something will be. And so it was what it was, Chad and I both. And, um, you know, part of what that was, was the universe organizing for me to be in sessions with different people who were far more talented than we were, um, and we were able to like make these amazing collaborations where we not only got a chance to collaborate with these people, we've got a chance to have a crash course into the way that they work and learn. And that is the that is one of the primary reasons why I'm able to still do this right now. Mm -hmm. That I have been the benefactor of working with people who are really talented, who I could learn something from. Well, this has been such and, a treat. By the way, sorry to impede, but Miley is one of those people. This was a girl that was on her journey of discovery for who she was, may have and may have not known what she wanted out of it, but it, whatever this was, it was destined for her path. So sometimes she knew what she wanted. Sometimes she was like, mm, not sure, but I, open and I'd like to know. And mm -hmm. regardless to what, my curiosity is going to continue to lead me. And that's what happened with her. Mm -hmm. And so I, again, yeah. so happy to just be on that ride with her. Yeah. The unknowing really sometimes is the is the deeper knowing and sometimes not having an idea is actually it's it's like a, the part of the circle that's so magical is that empty space in between. Um, and so really, I think that's part of my knowing who I am, but also part of me not knowing exactly who that is, is, is a part of the magic and it's still a part of the magic. I think um, that's something I've always felt really comfortable in is like the deep end the i'm looking at a picture of david bowie now and he calls it the place where your feet can't touch the ground yeah i feel really safe um in that place i actually feel more comfortable in a place yep. that i'm uh that i'm I, that i is unknown to me than i do in something that feels too structured um and again to talk about the beginning of us meeting each other and him saying, you know, a song can sound like a shoe or a dress or a bag or a piece of jewelry. It's like when I listened to doctor just recently this year and we decided we were going to kind of put it out after it sat in the vault for the last, you know, over 10 years. Um, I knew exactly what it looked like. And so that's why I really, I love the song, but I really wanted to make this video because, you know, me and Pharrell with him being in Paris so much and me being in LA or Nashville and traveling around, we don't always get to be in the same place at the same time, but mm. I just like showing him where I, I'm at. And I felt like this song, like I said, just visually expressed my essence at this moment and oh. the freedom and the joy. And so this video, I'm just really excited for people to see it because I think it just is such a snapshot 
of who and where I am right now. Miley, we love the way you're moving. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're excited for whatever it is that you're, you're thinking about or creating or building or finishing. We don't know where you are in your timeline of life, but we like not knowing right now. That's actually the thing I'm really enjoying is the fact that you've stepped out of the grid and you're just doing things as and when you feel like it. And again, time is relative. Space is relative, right? As Yo-Yo Ma said to me, right? Like music is energy, time and space. And I feel like the three of you I just, I mean, sorry. Well, yeah, the three of you, I'll include Yo-Yo Ma in that. The three of you get that. And you, and you know, you, you really seem to be enjoying mm -hmm. the unknown right now, Miley. I've gone to work with Yo-Yo Ma on the Metallica record too. So it does get to be the three of us. Yeah. Love that. He's such a beautiful yeah. human. Doing Yo-Yo Ma with Metallica. This is like, this is my life. Well, this is why I tell you I have no bad days. <laughs> you know that bad sentence days. alone. Like, you know, I go <laughs> shopping with Pharrell and buy Chanel's while we're writing music and play Metallica <laughs> records with Yo-Yo Ma. Like, yeah. I just can't complain. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. All right, before I let you go, um, I got to ask the only, because I, I didn't, you know, I just was looking forward to speaking to you, P. I'm so stoked we got a chance to connect again, Miley, while you, you're figuring things out. Um, but, you know, has this, has this, do you want to keep this energy up? I'm not talking about releasing music. I want to keep you in the space of, amb of ambiguity. But is this the energy you want to continue to try to create right now? Has this unlocked something in you, reconnecting with the song, doing this video and moving this way? Absolutely. I mean, from my perspective, like, listen, it's all about my friends with a PH. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I for agree. I, yeah, I agree. I know what that means, Pharrell. Um, yes, sir. Miley, thank you for jumping on the phone. We know that it's it's not your priority right now, but you obviously are really proud of the song and, and the friendship with UMP is very deep. And so it was really nice to be able to bask in that for just a few minutes. You, so thank you. You too, as people, are always my priority. Thanks for having me. And I'm excited, P, we get to drop a song tonight. Let's go.